What if, what if you brought a total e-bike novice to a World Cup event and got them to race? What if that event just happened to be one of the most technical of the season? But what if that person had never, ever ridden an EMTB before? Welcome to late summer in the Pyrenees, where we will see if our absolute beginner can survive amongst the towering peaks of Ludenville E-Enduro World Cup. The person in question travels by the name of Mundy, Isaac Mundy. His largely former life of cross-country, professional road, a four-cross racer and GMBN presenter. If it's got two wheels, there's a great chance he'll have ridden it very fast. I started probably when I was about 10 or 11 years old, raced mountain bikes through my teenage years, full cross downhill, um, and then started racing on the road. Did that to kind of professional level-ish. Had the opportunity to race some XC World Cups and results maybe that I'm proud of, I hold on to. I've won national medals and XC, hill climb, national crit champs. Experience then by the cartload, except the long technical stages, eight hour days, and of course the legendary power stage, another world to what he's used to. And hell, he's not even turned on an EMTB yet. Uh, I have zero experience riding an electric mountain bike. So this will be, yeah, my first time riding it actually in the event. But enduro, you race multiple stages all day that are predominantly downhill tracks and you have to pedal, get shuttles, get gondolas between them within a set liaison time. So alongside the, the UCI World Cup enduro and e-bike enduro, there's an open race uh, for people like me who've never done it, don't have any ranking points to get into the pro event. And it's a slightly scaled down version. It's a little bit kinder on the transitions, slightly less intense, but we race all the same descending stages um, with just a little bit more generosity for the amateurs. So we are here in Ludenville in the French Pyrenees, a 56 kilometer loop, elevations to 2,200 meters and six long and brutally steep and rooty stages, plus that spicy power stage. I do have quite a competitive nature, I think. I do get more out of myself when I'm pushing, but uh, I'm going to have to try and just not beat myself up about it and I'll go better if I'm just chill. Um, so we'll see how that goes. <laughs> Can't think of a more scary place to introduce <laughs> know, you to the world of e-mountain biking. Hey, look, I've got your bike. Uh, okay. Canyon Strive On. Yeah. So, um, brand new bike to a uh, pure mountain biker about to be possibly turned. Oh, look at this. Has he actually turned it on yet? Isaac has a Canyon Strive on to race the event. 170 millimeters of travel, geometry that will enable him to tackle the hugely varied terrain, a mix of downhill and climbing ability. The strong Bosch CX motor, a 750 watt hour battery. Hey listen, so you've spent most of your mountain bike career on these things up here, so key thing about you mountain biking, yeah. you won't need any of that. So, buttons? Yeah. Not used to that. So you got a Bosch motor. Okay. Uh, you got Eco, you got Tour Plus, EMTB mode. That's what we're here for, I guess. What is? EMTB mode, that's the whole video. EMTB mode, what are you on about? <laughs> to... Ha! And then... Of course. <laughs> the EMTB is a mode. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why have you got that? <laughs> We gotta be safe. I don't know where you know it might take off and put well, me. In. Might do in that mode. Yeah, gotta go. be careful. I'll put it in that ENTV mode you're talking oh, about. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> What's he? At least he understand. Might understand cadence. So much to learn. Well, that was easy. What are you talking about? It's okay. Well, try this one. You have you know, been on an e-bug before. Well, I you? definitely haven't. You have. Give that another go. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Yeah, I, I feel like a, a goose running away from a flock of wolves up there. <laughs> <laughs> at the Enduro World Cup events, there's a day before the race, practice day, where you get a single full top to bottom run on each stage. You can stop during that and look at sections and try and remember lines, uh, but there's, there's so much to try and absorb and remember. It's more about getting a, a general feel for each stage, I feel, and like maybe trying to film it. You can't remember everything. You just get an idea of where you are on the hill and that kind of thing. Nervous now because oh, I know how slick and hard the tracks are here. Uh, but I've done one lap on the bike, so I'm obviously ready to race a world-level event. Oh, what James, you think I am? Your first day on an e-mountain bike. Our strategy for today, go -y, try and go -y all the tracks, so at least I know where I'm going later and I can review them, and be behind the curve and chill and just enjoy it, and I think then I'll do better. Be not... behind the curve and chill. This sounds like a strategy to me. See his eyes echoing into the horizon. It's already quite a climb this, probably done 300 meters from the car park. Seems that Isaac's getting into the uh, modes quite good. He's in an easy gear, so even 68 kilos, still a considerable effort on this climb. It's just about to drop into stage number one. I got a break a bit earlier than normal, yeah. but then the bike can maybe sit in the corners a bit harder. It's just learning how to use that weight to load the tires. Just figuring that out. Yeah, I guess today. I guess it's the same with any mountain bike. It's, it's timing, you know, yeah. learning to pick the bike using the suspension. Yeah. The Strive's got really good lively suspension, so he's yeah. moving the bike. But I tell you what, most of the time you go. Are you feeling in attack mode? I guess I better be. You better be. <laughs> Classic. What Isaac will have to get used to: downhill and then up into some little climbs. Pretty slick at the moment, so. Race day could be could be a lot drier. High level of technicality on That's that up there. Real slick. But rooty. Dark. It's definitely world level event, right? 100%. Typically the terrain, the, the tracks here in Ludenville are very natural, kind of like fast alpine style single track in the open, but the majority of the time we're gonna spend racing is in the woods. Um, it's pretty rocky, steep, and just hanging on to it because it's they're quite convex the mountains, they get steep down the bottom. Whoa. So this is what the stride is for. <laughs> oh, nice line choice. Look at this. Whoa, it's steepening now. I'm on a 29 neuron. So, whoa. Oh, <laughs> me. <laughs> so the great thing about Isaac's bike now on the stride, this is where that 170, 29, 27 bike. Oh, he's just getting away from me. So that means he can get over the back of the bike because this track here, it's really got pretty steep. Whoa. Okay, this is where I'm hanging on for grim death again. Oh, he's got some good lines. He has got some good lines. Wow, the amount of routes on this track is mind-blowing. If you spent your life riding trail centres or bike parks, maybe forget coming to Ludenville because it's pretty full on. Oh. If Isaac makes it to the end of this race without coming off, I'll be mind-blown. And so, with most of the gravity-based practice done, it was time for the showpiece the major point of difference between EMTB and Enduro. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the power stage. Okay, uh, we are a PWS torture. 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 What's in your head? You might have heard about power stages a lot. I have, and this one seems a little bit more technical than some of them that are just power. Honestly, it's the most nerve-wracking moments of my whole cycling career, especially when you've got Jonesy on the sideline. Yeah. Causing you to fall off. But yeah, you this have a lot, of people, a lot of people here watching heart rate will be pounding yeah. and watching you make a mess of it basically that's what they're here for it's all part of it it's cool yeah. to see this whole evolution of it and i'm quite enjoying to see what this turns out like look at that yannick oh. pontel smooth Very he smooth. can't put any foot wrong though because this is his one practice run pressure's on you've ridden world cup cross country what's the problem 
perfect guy to coach you. Yeah. The, fir the first so thing is you need to keep front load, which is often really hard in those sections. So if you keep the saddle really high, especially with the acceleration and the momentum of the bike, it's kind of tilting you towards the back. So you need to make sure that you drop a bit the saddle and keep your butt really on the nose of the saddle to keep okay. control so the front wheel traction stay there. And then from my perspective, don't be too excited. Try to create momentum, brake, keep the traction. And as soon as you engage the motor, keep the brakes on. And yeah. you manage the power with the way you release the brake. So it's almost like a cyclocross with yeah. pedaling for the grip. And you try to keep the front on the ground and uh, try to be precise. I think I learned from practice day that there is a lot of corners to remember. I think the hard thing with enduro, like downhill, for example, it's maybe three or four minute track and you've got it dialed or you try to and you know exactly where you're going to be braking and shifting and setting up where there's enduro is a lot more loose. Like there will be a few key critical points, I think, or like blind crests or setup lines that you'll remember. And the rest of it is just uh, absorbing the style of track, the type of dirt and how grippy the rocks and roots are and trying to kind of just predict that a bit is improvisation in the race as well. Having failed miserably to stay in touch with Isaac throughout practice, I knew the man was on fire and adapting quickly. Time now to light it up. Believe it, feel it, and do it. the next hour, sign on, get my timing wristbands, get on the gondola, do uh, 1,400 metres up there, and then ride some stages back down to the bottom. It's pretty wet and slick and greasy this morning, um, so I better get used to that very quick. <laughs> Going to go full ham straight away? Or? No, I'm very good at first run UGs. Um, and the difference between going full ham and going chill is probably like two seconds or something. So um, I think the last stage, you can probably make quite a lot of time, and I know that track quite well, and I walked it last night. Um, so if I feel like I'm riding well, then I can try and press on. Just trying to get moving a bit because we haven't got any riding before the first stage. It's just two lifts. So I'd, if I didn't just ride a little bit, I'd drop in completely cold. So I just I'd, this just gets my breathing going, upper body, wake up a little bit, and then I'll just like spin my legs for a couple of minutes. Stage one is where it was all happening. It was super early in the morning. It was cold at 2,200 meters. It's probably the one that suited me the least. I'm not that good at really high speed committed racing. Like there was no lines on the track. Well, one line and you just had to go really, really fast. <laughs> and I don't think I really did that. I was quite nervous. I wanted to just get into it. Um, and that meant that I uh, fell over on the second last corner. Oh, bollocks and I was trying to get off the trip, get up and get, you know, and I dropped my water bottle. And then the guy crashed into the back of me and went over the bars. I mean, I was in a big wide open field. I felt like he could have gone around me, but I was on the racing line and it's just something that happens. And it was just, it made me feel a bit, you just, it gets to you and you feel stressed and, and it's not very nice um, to try and come back up from that. Oh, it's really annoying. Oh well, oh well, whatever. It was a bit hard to switch into like race mode. Um, I didn't really feel like I was really attacking it because it's early in the morning and first run, but it's a bit disappointing to slide out on the last corner of the track when you feel like you've just kind of chilled, but that's part of it. So um, I better get to stage two, but it's all good. So moving on to stage two, I think that was the first time where it was actually, it felt like real like racing. The, it's a, it was a short, it was like three, three and a half minute track in the woods near the bottom of the hill. So it was really rough and blown out a lot of holes. So you're just trying to hang on to the e-bike and uh, pilot it down the rut. There's a few bits that were quite committed. Like once you were in the gully, that was it. You just had to point and steer. I think I was like sixth on that stage or something. I was quite happy with that. And I felt like I actually, I was like, okay, I'm riding the bike now. Oh, 
the power stage in the race was a challenge. I, I was quite confident in a way, and then in, when you come to race it, you're just going that much faster than the practice, so everything, it's, it was less than a minute. I think I did 49 seconds. Okay, conditions are dry, conditions are dry. Conditions are dry, good, you're in the gear. Nice. So it comes on you so fast, each corner is just on you before you know it and you've got to try and turn around and I was like slipping and coming off but I, I feel like I'm quite experienced from cyclocross in like knowing when to get off the bike and how to not lose momentum so you never like stall and stop and if you're like dabbing you jump off and I don't. So I didn't get through clean which was a bit disappointing, but fourth on that stage, I think I was like a second and a half, two seconds off the win over a minute. That's the difference though, training and racing. I just... huh. There will be one or two pros who will mess that up, I guarantee you. But anyway, you're on your way to becoming a pro now, so get used to it. <laughs> I think this is probably the fifth time I've ridden up this climb and definitely the easiest. Oh my God. 650, something like that. Proper climb, a hard climb, like they do it in the tour. A Col de Laurent Aza. This is the main pedal liaison of the day to stage four, Kern, which is a sick bit of track. I've just been looking at the overall life timing just to see if you're in touch and I was almost dead last after the first stage because I had a silly little crash, um, but put a good time down on stage two, moved up to halfway up the field, eighth, happy with that, and then stayed there after the power stage. Uh, so feel like I'm kind of in touch and try and keep moving up. Hey. Oh, it's dark. On a really good run. Oh, <laughs> Just as he says that, he misses us out. Concentrate. Uh, that stage was good. I'm happy with that. It was really hard physically, actually. It's six six and a bit minutes. I was fourth on that stage, so it's bumped me up quite a lot. I'm about four or five seconds off the top five now. It's good, I'm basically doubling my experience today. I mean, how, how many minutes have you spent on an e-bike now in the last two days? Mm. I mean, yesterday was a long day, but actually riding, probably about half an hour, and then 17 minutes today. <laughs> Good to see Isaac uh, very happy with that stage. This is probably one of the most technical stages. Uh, an immense puzzle to work out. I mean, he was pretty kind of modest about it, but uh, a very hard stage to race and, and get right. But uh, it looks like you did a great job on that. So one more stage to go. And uh, yeah, for, a, for his maiden voyage, seems to be settling in pretty well. Bit of a stool there, but the e-bike got me through. We've got five, five minutes to the start of the final stage, which is the big one. Nearly 800 meters descent, I think. And then um, we're done. So loose. No, I missed a big line there, but it's okay. Nice is so physical. 
Oh, oh my mouth is so dry, I'm dying. Oh, missed. Oh, that was good, but I'm not going to talk for a minute. Oh, I'm done. Finished. Yeah, just about managed to swing off the rig for 31 minutes of racing. Last stage was seven and a half minutes of just flat out, like you had to push so hard on that stage because it was, yeah, loose in the woods. To be honest, last three stages, I don't know if I could have done them any better, pretty happy. Like, missed maybe one line on one stage, but they were all like six, seven minute stages, so I was, yeah, super happy with that. So I managed to move up to fifth by the end. It's not a massive field, but I feel like everyone's bit more experience. So happy like to to put down a performance I felt was like competitive and I pushed and I moved up the order throughout the whole day of the race and I felt like legitimate like it wasn't just like a stunt me doing it but I didn't crash and mess everything up. I, I would summarize my weekend riding an e-bike for the first time as it, it's weird it's, it's just a different sort of bike and there's so many different types of mountain bike we ride. There was a few times I went offline in like a, a rock garden climb and then the the power and the momentum of the e-bike just let me go up, back onto the line. And then there are other bits that are really difficult when it's just hanging onto it on the steep rough bits. So maybe next year, if I can uh, scrape some points together somehow, it'd be cool to give the, the pro e-bike racer a, a, a go because I think that was, they did like two uh, more like technical power stages plus the liaisons were a lot more challenging. And I think that would really bring out the the, the like real challenge of the e-bike race. You've got to think about your batteries more and use the charge and know when to swap your batteries and like how to get round and like, that would be the next level for me. But I'm gonna probably need more than um, one practice day for that. <laughs>